Okay, testing one two one two one two one two. Today's lesson is four point two, adding and subtracting polynomials. We've got two goals today. The first being identify a polynomial and its parts, more of a vocabulary goal. And the second being to simplify the to find to simplify simplify to find find to simplify the sum or difference of a polynomial. Sum and difference obviously being addition and subtraction or adding and subtracting term today is obviously what is a polynomial and the word polynomial is a combination of the prefix poly meaning many and the suffix meaning or nomial meaning term so when you put those two together what you get is many terms and for the sake of what we're doing that's what we can define it as polynomial just means many terms and then right here what we have are the type of terms you'll see in math so the many terms that you might see are constant terms. So if you're looking at the example to the left, you can see that we've got a constant term of 8 right here. You'll see some variables. Sometimes you'll just see one variable. Sometimes you might see, you know, a thousand variables depending upon what the polynomial is. In this example, we only have one variable, that variable being x. We've got our x's right here. And then you'll see these variables have exponents on them. So in this polynomial, we've got an exponent of 5, we've got an exponent of 2, and then obviously this one has an exponent of 1. So you'll see a, a variety of different types of polynomials, but you can understand them as just many terms. The real important part is, though, you understand what a term is. So a term is or are the pieces of a polynomial that are separated by addition, and I put in parentheses subtraction because subtraction is essentially addition of a negative number right so in our example we have one term right here negative 3 x to the fifth and then we've got an addition sign and we've got a 2x squared that would be our second term we've got a subtraction sign so our third term would be negative 7x and then our fourth term obviously would be 8 so this is a four term polynomial and then the last little caveat is standard form. So how do you write a polynomial that has variables and exponents and constants? You're always going to write it from or order it from the highest degree exponent in numeric order all the way down to if you have a constant, that would be the last thing that you have ordered. So we've got our highest exponents first, then our next highest exponent, then our next highest exponent, and then we have a constant. So that's what is placed in the very end. Let's go ahead and get into some examples today. We have example number one and we're going to simplify this polynomial. Right now we've got one term, two terms, three terms, four terms, five terms, six terms and I already know by looking at it that in the end we'll have four terms and you'll see why in a second. Our first step will be to identify like terms. So identifying like terms, that means you're looking for the same variable and the same degree exponent. That would be what a like term is. So right here we've got a negative 13 with no variable. So this is a constant. So you've got to have some way of being able to identify what your like terms are. I'm going to use colors for this example. Now we've got a 10 in squared, so that's obviously not the same thing as a constant. And then we've got a negative 6n. So 10 in squared and negative 6n, they both share the same variable, but the degree of the exponent is different, so they are not like terms. So I've got to use a different color to box this one. And then we've got a 4 into the 4th, same thing with the previous two. They all have n's, but the exponent is a 4, and neither of those had an exponent of 4, so I've got to use a different color for this one. And then we've got a 5 in squared. We had a 5, uh, we had a 10 in squared right here. Same variable, same exponent. These are like terms, so I can go ahead and use the same color to box them. And then a minus 13 or negative 13 is a constant. We already had a constant, so I'm going to box that with blue. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to rank degree of exponents from highest to constant. So I'm going to kind of just list them out. So we've got our highest exponent being 
the fourth power because that's higher than the second power and it's higher than the first. So I'm going to go ahead and write n squared, I'm sorry, into the fourth. That will be the highest. And then we've got our next highest, which is n squared. And then what we have is an n, and then we have a constant. So you see why I said four terms? Because we have four different terms. Now we can go ahead and commute the coefficients of like terms together. So here, what we're going to put in the parentheses are all the numbers in front of our n to the fourth powers. In this case, we only had one n to the fourth power, so we're only going to put one number in the parentheses. n to the second power, we had 10, and we had a positive 5, so we're going to write plus 5. And then for n, Again, we only had one number, it was a negative 6. And then for our constants, we had a negative 13. And then we've got a negative 13 again, so we can just write minus 13 since it's negative. And now what we're going to do is we're just going to combine the coefficients and write it and write our final answer. So there's nothing to combine here for this 4. So we're going to go ahead and write 4 in to the fourth power plus 5 plus or 10 plus 5 is 15 in squared and then instead of writing plus here I'm going to write minus because this is a negative and we can just write the subtraction instead negative 6 in and then again we can write minus 26 so our final answer would be what this is right here and then obviously in the school G instead of the only addition is going to be making sure that you open up the power with a caret. Done. Example number two. So our first step here is to identify our like terms. So we've got a fourth power. And I'm going to identify like terms by just writing like the power, the degree exponent that they are. So we've got a fourth power. We've got a constant, we've got a fifth power, we've got a fifth power, we've got a first power, and we've got a fourth power. So we've got two fifth powers, two fourth powers, and then there's no like terms for our constant and our first power. Now what we can do is we can go ahead and order the exponents from highest to lowest. So our first one is a to the fifth power, and then we've got an a to the fourth power, and then we had an a, and then we had our constants. So I'm going to leave this one kind of blank. I guess I can put a little C above it. So a to the fifth power, we're going to go ahead and commute our coefficients. So we had a negative 2. And we had a positive 11. So we say plus 11. For our four, fourth powers, we had a 9 and a 12. For a, all we had was a negative 2. Don't really need to put that in parentheses. And for our constant, all we had was a negative 6. So we just write minus 6. Don't need to put that in parentheses. Parentheses just kind of help you understand that you're combining the coefficients or the numbers in front of the variable with the same exponent. So negative 2 plus 11 is a positive 9. a to the fifth. 9 plus 12 is 21. So we can write plus 21 a to the fourth, and then we can combine the double the double sign plus a negative is just subtraction, so we'll say minus 2a, and then minus 6. If you wrote it as double sign, wouldn't be wrong, however, if it's asking you to simplify, you should always simplify double signs. So this would be our final answer here. 9a to the fifth, plus 21a to the fourth, minus 2a, minus 6. Example number three. So now I'm going to kind of just pick up the speed just a tad so I can see we've got a fifth power, third power, fourth power, fifth power, third power. Fourth power, first power, fourth power, fifth power. So we've got n to the fifth power. I'm going to go ahead and take care of the first two steps or the second and third steps together. So we've got negative three, done, and we've got a six. Done. And we can go ahead and add that to what we have for the fourth power because that is the next highest exponent. 
So we've got a negative 13. And I did not leave myself enough room. So we took care of this one. And then we've got this four power right here, and there's obviously no number in front, but there's this minus or this negative. And we know that when there's no number, what the number is, it's a 1. So here we can go ahead and write this as a negative 1. So I'll just write minus 1. Now we've got third power, which is just by itself because there was only one of them. So we can just write plus 2 into the third. Done. And then our last one. Here we've got 4 in. So there was no constant term in this example. So you obviously can't write one if there's not one. So we've ordered them from highest to lowest. Now we can go ahead and our last step is just to combine coefficients of our like terms. So we've got negative 3 plus 6 is a positive 3 into the fifth. Negative 13 minus 1 is a negative 14. So we can write this as minus 14 into the fourth. Plus 2 into the third. Plus 4n would be our final answer. This is a four term polynomial. Example number four. We've got a second power, we've got a fourth power, we've got a third power, second power, fourth power, third power. What's the highest number here? Okay, it's fourth and the variable is k, so we've got k to the fourth. And what are the coefficients for the ones that are to the fourth power? We've got 11 here, done. And we added seven here, so we can add seven. Plus, what are the coefficients for the third power? We had a negative 11, done, and we had a neg negative 12, so we just write minus 12, done. Now for the second power, we have a negative 2 and a 6, so we're going to write plus 6, done. And we've made sure that we've had all of our coefficients taken care of. Now we can go ahead and combine them. So 11 plus 7 is 18, k to the fourth. Negative 11 minus 12 is negative 23, so we're at minus 23, k to the third. And then negative, negative 2 plus 6 is a positive 4, so we're at plus 4, k to the second. Definitely not going to want to make mistakes on the combining part, especially if you have the ability to use a calculator to do the hard work for you. By the way, that was a three-term polynomial. One, two, three. All right, last example today. Let's go ahead and get into it. We got a constant term of 10. Let's put a C under that. And the C obviously is not working. And my thing's not working. Back after some technical difficulties. So we've got a C. We've got a second power. We've got a first power. We've got a second power. We've got a C. We've got a third power. Third power is the highest. And we've got no other third powers. So we've got 12x to the third power. That's been taken care of. Our next power is to the second power. And we've got a 14. Done. And we've got a negative 3, so we have a minus 3, x squared, done. And then we've got a first power. There's no other first powers, so we can just write minus 7x, done. And then we have two constants that we can add together. Okay, so we've commuted our coefficients in front of their proper variable and exponent. Now we can go ahead and simplify the ones that we can. So 12x to the third plus 14 minus 3 is 11 x squared minus 7x plus 10 plus 3 is 13 and that would be my final answer just so you can see it written out schoology answer 12 x to the third plus 11 x to the second minus 7 x don't need to open it up to 1 plus 13. Good luck on the homework!